All right, so this is Thursday, May 31st, 2011, and Melissa Cantrell and I are continuing on, and this is part two, and so now we're talking about um, uh, radiation removal or recovery. Yeah. Um, so if you think about what I said in part one about the, you know, the hierarchy of first year uh, radiation affects electrical fields, then the DNA, which is our cellular replicative blueprint, and then actually physical tissue and bone, which would be burns, Right. Um, most people are going to be affected uh, if they are affected by uh, bioelectrical fields, um, their electrical fields, and also their uh, DNA. And so the the thing about DNA is, um, I think it may be more likely that people in the U.S. will be affected. Um, well, will most likely be affected more than people imagine because they're so deficient in B twelve. Mm. Um, because Which B Pardon yeah. Me? So, yeah. Tell me, like, why well, would B12 affect your DNA? So, so most people think of B12 as, um, you know, like you go get a B12 shot or you use some sort of sublingual B12 to help your mood. You know, it's like this. Mo most people focus on the mood aspect um, of B12. And actually, B12 goes one step way farther that's even more important is it's the physical substance that DNA is synthesized from. Wow. So, for an, uh, for example, if you um, if you're making cells in your body, right, uh, which we are at a um, you know a frightening pace. I mean, it's just a, you know an amazing pace. No matter how old you are, you're still um, making DNA. Still yeah, making because cells. you're still turning over your cells. Right. Um, uh, so, if you think about that, then if you're using synthetic uh, B12. Mm -hmm. um, then every time your cells replicate, there's going to be subtle errors in the blueprint. Right. And the longer and uh, if the, the greater uh, longevity and quantity of uh, uh, synthetic B12 is used, then the further errors are, entered into, are introduced into the DNA blueprint a person has, which is, I mean, that's really bad. Yeah. Um, because what happens is if you have enough of those DNA errors, um, eventually... It turns into exponential, uh, you know, mutation of tissue, and we call that pathological cancer. Right. That's how I think that that's probably why people go from you know being seemingly healthy one day, symptom free, and all of a sudden having cancer all over their bodies, and the docs tell them to go home and die. Interesting. Excuse me. Go home and get your affairs in order. Right. <laughs> uh, that's code. <laughs> that's code for you yes. know dead man walking. <laughs> right. Uh, so. Um, um, we talked a little bit in part one about uh, you know eating seaweeds and um, being nutritionally um, fortified to begin with. In other right. words, you don't buy remedials to try to fix the problem after it happens. You fix yeah. it now, right now. You don't wait because we really, you know, we've got a two week window right now, and mm -hmm. after that, then you know the first wave of radiation will be uh, make landfall, and nobody really knows what that means. Right. Uh, now, for me and Yamaya, we're changing nothing that we do, uh, maybe eating a little bit more adults. Um, and it's, you know, pretty much just exactly what we do every day. Right. And so um, uh, the you guys have the the uh, uh, B-complex also. You saw yeah. that, right? So yeah. uh, a couple of things uh, that are required to make sure that people are both on track nutritionally and um, can rapidly reverse problems if they happen is... Um, you know, daily intake of B complex is right. important. Uh, Which in, you, in the B complex we're talking about is the natural state, natural source B complex. So it's yeah, not I mean you can You, I mean, the only place I know that uh, the only B I put in my mouth is the the PRL product. That right. Um, uh, that, that's one of the few products that we um, provide that is you know outside of our brand or outside of our label because it's just so good. Yeah. I can't make it any better. Yeah. When I can or if I can, then we'll have some under our label. Right. Uh, so B is important to make sure that um, a, a person's DNA is being synthesized properly to begin with. Mm -hmm. Because if there's if there are errors and then they come into contact with radiation, it's even worse. Right. And then by using B, then that will every, uh, like if a person has a lot of uh, mutations or errors in their DNA right now, if they start taking B12 or the B complex, then those errors, the volume of those errors will begin to drop mm -hmm. with every replication cycle of cells. Right. And so now is the time to do that. And and then that's taking the that B complex every day. Yeah, I right? would. It, uh, it, and is it, it's part, a vitamin that is stored, right? So if you 
if you take more than what your body is using that day, it will be stored? Uh, to a degree, but usually only for a few days. Okay. Uh, and the rule of thumb for B is that if you put it under your tongue for, you know, 30 or 60 seconds uh, and you um, have any type of um, state change at all, then that typically means that your B, some, one of your B nutrient buckets is a little bit low. Right. And my rule of thumb is I just take B until I have no effect. And when I first started taking it, I took it every day for probably six or eight months. And then it dropped down to every two or three days and every week, you know, once a week. And now it's very sporadic. Cool. Uh, and the other thing that's really important is if a person is in a cold climate, that they're using the D3. You guys have the D3, right? Yeah, the D3 yes. serum. Because uh, vitamin D3 um, is the, the kind of the core nutrient that allows nutrient assimilation and uptake. Mm. And so you so can be eating the best food ever. And if you can't uptake it and assimilate it, then what right. good is it? So, so the D3 is not just for calcium uptake, it's for any... A, any kind of nutrient. If you and, take, if you, to the degree a person has D3 in their body is how efficient their digestive is. So if, if, the, if their D3 starts dropping off, then digestion drops off with it. Right. And if you're living someplace where it's sunny, uh, even if the, the air is cold, go out and look at the sun. Right. Because the, the, the sun that comes through our eyes, uh, I think it's like a 10 or 20x of what is on our skin. Wow. So when you say cold climate, take D3, you're, you're imagining... Well, dark. Cold, yeah, someplace dark. where they're not getting enough sun. Yeah, and right. that also applies to even people in, you know, if you're living in, uh, you know, Austin or Dallas and you, you know, go to work early in the morning and come home late at night and sit inside all day, then, yeah. uh, you know, what I used to do when I worked at... Um, uh, I worked at IBM as a consultant for the last 10 years of my consulting career. And I would take a walk around the campus every couple of hours. And, you right. know, it's like a 10 or 15 minute walk. And, you know, in the brutal blistering hot sun. And so sometimes, you know, I, even even just getting that much sun, I'd go early in the morning when it was dark, come home late at night uh, right. sometimes. Or, you know, be in a car inside so I didn't get very much sun a lot of times, except what I got on my walks. Right. And usually I had a tan. Yeah. Now, and I've here, also heard it, it um, like the darker your skin, the more sun you need because um, yeah. it's not getting through. So. Yeah, it's filtered. And also uh, the other thing to keep in mind about uh, D3 that um, I think is, uh, I, I've yet to read any research about it and I've never heard anybody talk about it. It's just something I noticed when uh, Yamai and I came back from, um, the Hawaii the last time we went, which I think was in last July, mm -hmm. is I noticed that, um, you know, we came back from Hawaii and we kept being out in the sun here until it started getting cool. Uh, usually in the past, uh, my uh, tan has faded really fast. Mm -hmm. And I noticed even in February, people were still telling me, wow, you got a great tan. I'm thinking, right. hmm, last time I was in the sun was, you know, August or September. Right. So I suspect that um, you can uh, also another indicator of overall health may be how long you hold your tan. Oh, yeah. Because if you have no, um, if you're eating really clean foods and um, uh, f uh, fermented foods and pre-digested foods like uh, cacao, mm -hmm. uh, then I suspect that, uh, and also agave, because agave digests more in the liver instead of the digestive tract. I right. suspect that uh, there'd be a lot less drag of uh, using D3 resources in a person's okay. body. That makes sense. That's just a story I have. I haven't, right. you know, I haven't ever read any research like that, but right. I just noticed this last time we were yeah. back. Cool. Uh, All right. So, so to repair from the radiation, B, B complex, which yeah, has B12 B in B it. B complex, D3. D3. Uh, seaweeds. Okay. Uh, and also, you know, the... Um, uh, using uh, a combination of niacin water, which we were talking a little bit earlier before right. we started recording. Niacin water is you take a, a thousand uh, milligrams of powdered niacin in a capsule and dump it in one of your used agave bottles, which is a quart. Uh -huh. It's empty and fill it up with water and shake it up and right. then drink a shot of that uh, every day. And about an ounce. Yeah, which yeah. would be an ounce. And the way, the way you work with niacin well, the reason you're going to use niacin is to open up all your fluid passages. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that's constricted and blocked, the niacin will open it up. Right. And so typically what will happen is, you know, you use one ounce uh, a day for, uh, and then if, there, if you have no flush from that, the next day you do two ounces. Next day you do three ounces. And someplace like, um, hey, Dan. 
um, around maybe the four or five ounce uh, point, then you'll get a flush. Right. And wherever you get a flush, like say it's at five ounces, then you stay at five ounces for as many days as it takes for the flush to stop. And then the next day you go to six ounces. Okay. And then the next time, the next round, you know, maybe if you're up to 10 or 12 ounces, then the next time you're, when your bottle runs out, you put two caps in. So right. now you've got 2,000 milligrams. So then if you were at 10 ounces, these drop down to five ounces. So you have right. it to stay so at the same equal. level. Okay. Uh, and so if you if you use things like uh, niacin and then um, um, uh, using uh, sunfire salt, which is very mineral dense, along with your food and uh, uh, dulse and blue green algae, okay. then uh, I I think a person could uh, um, you know dramatically reduce the effects of radiation. The other okay. thing is to just um, uh, engage in activities that rebalance our electrical field, mm -hmm. which would be, you know, uh, standing on the earth barefoot. Right. Uh, if you have access to um, fresh water, not so much. If you have access to ocean salt water, though, mm -hmm. go get in it. Right. Um, you know, even standing under a shower is great, you know, so long as you've got a carbon filter that's taking the, right. the chlorine Take out chlorine so you don't out. have to breathe that in the fluorine. Um, so, you know, even, even running water, you know, a lot of people, um, uh, you know, unconsciously realize that they feel great taking showers. And the reason they're feeling great is they're standing under water that's in essence, uh, realigning their electrical field and also completely partitioning them away from all electrical interference. Wow. Because if you soak yourself or immerse yourself in water, that's one of the best EMF blockers ever. Interesting. I never realized that. Yeah. I do love showers. Yeah. yeah, so no, I'm kind of the same way. So interesting. Yeah, so did that kind of uh, did that uh, address so, all the? How to... I have a question about the the niacin. So if you're opening up your fluid passages, which the chocolate bliss kind of really gradually opens up your fluid passages as yep. well, will that naturally remove toxins, or do you have to like your chem free and metal free will actually usher the toxins out? Yeah, well, and I guess I probably should have talked about Chocolate Bliss also because it's built as a set of dilators that starts mm -hmm. in the intestinal tract and goes all the way out to the brain. Uh, typically, uh, Chocolate Bliss is much more comfortable than uh, right. niacin. A slower process. Because it's, it's, you know, doubtful that you'll get uh, a flush from right. Chocolate Bliss. And, and just by opening up your fluid passages, will that allow toxins and radiation to... Well, yeah, if you think about, well, if you think about uh, typically um, uh, toxins um, will... Well, we'll talk about toxins and then radiation. First off, toxins. So, you know, if you've got fluid passages that, you know, if you think about a, like a tube that, that snakes around and that tube is at a certain fixed diameter and most people's tubes are very uh, rigid and brittle because they're dehydrated and malnourished. Mm -hmm. So if you start putting really good nutrition through those tubes, they become more elastic and expand and the internal material that's built up, the plaque that's built up on the walls right. and in tissue will just crumble. So it's be, it'd be like if you had a long balloon that had some sort of scale on the inside and you... Right. <sighs> You know, you inflate it, all the scale just breaks off and, and uh, passes through. Okay. Uh, so if you couple, um, you know, shots of niacin with a big glass of uh, chocolate bliss, that's 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 quite ah. a party. I, I like that. Awesome. Uh, and then for um, uh, radiation, um, you know... I'd probably have a tendency, um, you know, the, um, the there's a lot of... Um, uh, talk about uh, zeolites. Um, I I kind of am of, 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 of the same opinion about zeolites that Bob Marshall is. Uh, you know the guy that runs PRL. Um, he and I had a long talk about zeolites. Uh, had to be like five or six years ago, and they have some really powerful zeolite uh, uh, substances they work with, but they never package those for ingestion. Mm. Only effect on electrical fields. And the and the challenge is that. Zeolites, uh, to properly use those, they really have to be, um, they really have to be preloaded with certain minerals so that you aren't scavenging every mineral, mineral in a person's body. I mean, they're, like, you, right. like you, you do desire to scavenge, um, you know, uh, arsenic and antimony. Right. But you wouldn't want to scavenge all the calcium or uh, a magnesium yeah. or chromium. So right. the, the big problem is that zeolites also scavenge the 
the really important trace minerals like chromium and cobalt. Mm. And unfortunately, um, like I said, I, I have the same p opinion as Bob Marshall is I think that using zeolites on a regular basis uh, or even a short-term basis may create a set of health challenges that are very hard, hard to diagnose. Me right. personally, I'd rather use plant-based things like chem-free and metal-free that we have that are, um, you know, things like kudzu. I mean, kudzu is a powerful, like if you, so here's another thing I'm just thinking right now. If you live uh, in, um, you know, the South and in, in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, and you get in a bind for uh, money or um, uh, transportation binds, and you're in a situation where there's a lot of radiation, uh, one of the best things you can do for radiation is get a hold of kudzu. And it grows in the south? It grows in the south. If you talk with somebody in the south, it's like yeah. kudzu is taking over certain states in, in wow. the country. Uh, like at, uh, Georgia and uh, especially in Alabama. Yeah. It's a really big, they think it's a problem. Uh, maybe it's just nature's way of getting prepared for what's coming. Right. Really. Here, so, um, have some free kudzu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, my, my preference would be to, to go more towards uh, chem-free and metal-free. Yeah. And... Um, uh, you know, the, the dense greens like blue green algae and, you know, if you've got things growing in your garden that look like um, uh, brooms like comfrey, for example, if you look yeah. at it, it looks like a broom and so Doctrine of Signatures says that that's a good broom. Uh, oh, uh, and then the other thing, I guess I, uh, I probably ought to just mention now that I'm thinking about it, is if you start developing um, uh, cancerous symptoms, Mm -hmm. then the really good uh, fix for that is a uh, blood root type of based uh, mm -hmm. preparations like black salve, which may it, become very hard to get. So if it's you, already hard to get. Yeah, if you, if you don't have black salve on hand, um, uh, you know, it's probably best to, to have that. And I won't even talk about where I get mine. Uh, if you listen to this and you'd like more information and you can convince me that you're one of our clients already... Uh, which means you'll have to say, you know, I buy from Melissa and here's my favorite thing and my favorite experience, then I might tell you where I get uh, black sap. Maybe. The other thing is you can, uh, you know, get blood root. Like we make our own uh, blood root decoctions. Oh, cool. Uh, or um, uh, tinctures. Yeah. So we take blood root and grind it up in a coffee grinder and then pack it in uh, pure vodka and let it sit for six wow. to eight weeks. And then do you drink it? Yeah. Wow. It's it's intense, so you can yeah. you know if you you can tell, I've seen uh, people take one single drop of um, something like uh, blood root and end up in a fetal position on the ground with stomach wow. cramps. Wow! Uh, and that'll happen if there's something mutagenic that requires to be gone. So. Yep. And yep. Uh, you know, I really uh, I'm I'm unsure of what the effect is, but MMS might be a useful technology too because it's very alkalizing. Right, uh, and it might have a tendency to bind with and neutralize uh, radiation. I'm, I, other than doing yet. research on that, but I would just yeah. suspect that that might have some facility there. So if you if you find that you've got radiation, I mean, most most people won't know because it won't get to a burn stage. But if you develop cancers or autoimmune diseases, um, or or you're in a radiation prone area and you're you want to do something about it, then do all the preventative measures. So yeah. eat the good quality groceries, nutrient dense, um, increase the dulse and the blue green algae and the salt, and mm -hmm. then do some of the flushing with like the chocoplus, the niacin, um, and the chemfree in the middle to help flush out both the toxins and any radiation that's in there. Yeah. And the main thing to remember is that, um, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. And so it's just like investing or, you know, creating a business. You don't expect, well, I mean, some people expect it. And I think it's odd to think that they're going to go into business today and have a seven or eight figure business at the end of the week. Right. Um, uh, although there are a lot of Internet marketing courses that would lead you to believe you can do that. Right. Um, all the, um, you know, people making seven, eight, nine figures that I know um, will tell you the same thing that whatever uh, good you do is a marathon rather than a sprint. Yeah. And so you start today. Or yeah. as soon as you come into contact with inf this information, you start today, pass along to your loved ones, have them start today so that yeah. it's in a prevention mode rather than a cure mode. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much for this information, David. You're the best. Oh, Love thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>